Hello, welcome to lesson 15 of the course Introduction to Rapid Application Development using SQL Server and ASP.NET Maker. I'm Benjamin Fadino. This lesson is the last lesson in the series. And in this lesson, we are going to learn how to create a special SQL authentication user for the application that we are about to generate. And we are also going to generate a starter ASP.NET Core 3.1 MVC application using ASP.NET Maker. For this lesson, we require three prerequisites. The first prerequisite is the database that we have been creating since lesson 1 to 13. The second requirement is the ASP.NET Maker software that we downloaded and installed in the last lesson. And the last requirement is a stable and steady internet connection. So the first thing we are going to do is to ensure that our SQL Server instance is running. Okay, the instance we want to use is running. So the next thing we are going to do is to start Management Studio. Now we are going to connect to Management Studio using SQL Server Authentication. We just connected as the system admin. So we are going to create a special user account for the application we are about to generate. We are going to call the name of this special user account, App User Tree. So what we'll do is we will expand security at server level. We'll right click on Logins. We'll select New Login. Then we type a name for our new user, which is App User Tree. We change the authentication type to SQL Server Authentication. We change the password to J. We, we type in a password, and the password I'm typing in is James Bond. James Bond. I'm on checking and first password policy. Then after that, I'm going to click on user mapping. Now, after clicking on user mapping, I'm going to map the database we have been creating, which is Muyikbang DB. I'm mapping it to App User Tree, and I'm setting the default schema by clicking the ellipses here. I click Browse, then I'm going to select DBO. DBO stands for Database Owner. I click OK. I click OK again. After that, I'm going to select DB owner under database row membership. Then I click OK again. So now that we have created our special app user called app user tree, I will now go ahead and close management studio. The next thing I'm going to do is to start ASP.NET Maker 2020. So I'll double click on the icon to launch it. Now, after double, double clicking on the icon, then I'm going to select my database type to be Microsoft SQL Server, the server name to be dot slash Ibukonolua. The username to will be app user tree. The password will be James Bond. The database I'm going to select will be Muyik Bank DB. The schema I'm going to select will be DBO database owner. After that, I will check load tables dynamically. After that, I'll click on connect. Now, 
I will now go ahead and click and select account types in the database pane. After selecting account types, I will click on the table tab for it. I will check inline hard, inline edit, grid add, grid edit. After that, I'll go ahead and check the checkbox next to accounts. I'll also click on the table options for it. I'll check Eli Hat, Eli Edit, Grid Add, Grid Edit. And I'll go to oh, new template found. I don't want to update, so I click Cancel. So after that, I'll go to Fields. And then I'm going to change the caption for account type ID. I'm going to change the caption for account type ID to account type. Right now, the edit tag for account type ID is text. I'm going to change the edit tag for account type ID. I'm going to change it from text to select. After changing the edit tag, from text to select, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check use lookup table, use drop down. Then I'm going to enter the error message for validation. And the error message for validation will be please select account type. After that, I'll go to lookup table. I'll open the drop down. I'll select account types as the table name and the link field as account type ID. Now, the link field is what gets saved into the database in a drop down. Then the next thing is I'm going to configure my display field number one. My display field number one will be account type name. In effect, I'm telling the application that I want the end users to see account type name while I want account type ID to be saved to the database. After that, I'll go ahead and work on the last table, which is transactions table. I'll click on transactions table. I'll click the table options for it. I'll check inline hat, inline edit, grid add, grid edit. After that, I'll go to the fields. I'm going to change the caption for account ID from account ID to account details. So I've just changed the caption for account ID from account ID to account details. I'm also going to change the edit tag for account ID. I'll change it from text to select. And then after that, I'm going to check Use lookup table, use drop down. Error message will be please select account details. Under lookup field, sorry, under lookup table, I'm going to select accounts. The link field this time around will be account type. Sorry, account ID. Link field this time around is account ID. For this drop down, I'm going to require three display fields. The display fields are account number. The second display field is first name. Why the last? Uh, display field is last name. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the database in the database pane. 
after clicking on the database name, which is Muyik Bank DB, I'll go ahead and configure some other settings. The first one is ASP.NET setting. I'm going to ensure both server side and client side validation. I click on File Upload. I'm going to check on Delete fi File on Update Stroke Delete. Then I'm going to move to Page Options. I'm going to set the following records per page. 10. Now, when I check PDF, it tells me to enable PDF extension from the main menu. So I go to Tools. I'll click on Extensions. I enable iText Sharp extension for PDF. I enter a title for my hub, Moik Bank Hub. Brand local as Muyik Bank. I'm going to change this to 2020 Muyik Bank Limited. Uh, okay. The last tab I'm going to work on is the generate tab. And the, I'm going to select the project folder. So I'll click here. I'll navigate down to my C drive. Select a folder that I want to use. So I want to use this folder called Music Bank Hub. So I click OK. After that, I'm going to click Generate. Sorry, before I click, let me click Cancel. I've not saved the project yet. So I'm going to save the project. Save as. My Bank App. So I click Save. So now let me click generate. So again, I click generate. So code generation completed successfully. I close this. Do you want to save the current project? I say yes. And then the last thing I'm going to do is to open the project in Visual Studio. So I navigate to the folder where I have saved the, the generated source code. This is the folder. So this is the project file. Say open with. Visual Studio 2019. After that, I'll click the play button to run the project.
Thanks for watching. We have come to the end of this course, Introduction to Rapid Application Development using ASP.NET Maker and SQL Server. Please be on the watch out for my next course. Thank you very much for watching.